So Dibs Marketplace was a fractional marketplace. Dibs, a platform for trading cards that launched in 2021, says it's shutting down operations of its marketplace. The company says it, it will instead focus efforts on growing tokenization as a service business, which, yeah, I mean, I don't, uh, that doesn't sound like a thing to me. Like I, I, I it's obviously an NFT um, web three type of thing, but for me, it's like, <laughs> Uh, token it, it just sounds like a lot of buzzwords to me like i get that I, you know one of the things i think that they have sort of focused on a little bit has been nfts like if you go to their twitter it's kind of the physical world's on ramp to web3 they have clearly shifted to nfts pretty much fully well nfts and um i'll just actually just quickly go to their twitter so yeah they've shifted pretty much specifically to yeah, and it's interesting. They're retweeting articles about it as well. I don't, I don't know exactly. I think we'll get more information in in the coming days about like, you know, the company and what's going to happen exactly. Um, but it was a fractional. It was a fractional investing company. Um, you know, I think, I think that they said that although that they were affected by some of the banking stuff that was happening over the past few weeks or the past like week that. It doesn't affect customer. Um, looks like it doesn't affect customer funds, which I guess is good. I think maybe that could be because the, the the federal government kind of stepped in a little bit here. I'm not gonna. This is not a political show, so I'm not going to get into sort of what should or shouldn't be done in this circumstance from a government perspective. Um. Yeah, Dibs halt buying and selling uh, functionality on its website as of Wednesday. Um, I think that they said that they're going to be basically just cashing, cashing everybody out. I mean, I think the big thing here of this story is that they had two rounds of funding. Um, one that was in 2020 for 2.8 million. And then, oh, 2021 for 2.8 million. And then one in July of 2021 for 13 million. Um, with Amazon being kind of, from from what I saw, Amazon was the biggest do, uh, donor or fund. I don't know exactly how you, what you call it in the venture capital world. Uh, but then in December, 2021, it was announced that Amazon had also invested an unannounced sum in the company. I mean, it really, I think what this comes down to is that they invested, Amazon came in, invested a bunch of money, and it didn't return the money that they were looking for at the time. Because I, and I'm not gonna really get, I guess I'll quickly get into venture capital and funding and all that kind of stuff. And I mean, I don't, I've seen videos and I've seen better explanations than the one I'm going to give, but it essentially venture capital and funding and all that kind of stuff. It's, it's a little bit like a Ponzi scheme just because what ends up happening is that like, uh, you know, like I said, they raise the 2.2.8 million dollars in funding in the initial seed round, and then they've raised 13 million. So they they essentially what happens here in the video that I saw explaining it said that eventually what happens there when they keep doing these rounds of funding is that they keep trying to grow. They put money into marketing to grow the base users to then increase the amount of users so that way they can do more funding, which I don't know if they necessarily necessarily did that here, but I'm sure that the the, the people who invested the 2.8 million, I'm sure they're the ones that probably cashed out pretty well when they then raised 13 million. So it's like it's probably like a half and half where I wouldn't be surprised if like seven of the seven of the 13 million essentially was distributed to the initial people who had invested in the 2.8 seed round, you know, I don't know. I, it, maybe that happened. Maybe it didn't, but it just seems like it, that's sort of the explanation that I heard on a lot of venture capital and a lot of like VC funding from that scenario. But I think, I think probably what happened here, like I said, was that Amazon came in, Amazon being such a big business, they own a bunch of other businesses that, you know, are just for Amazon. It's just a number on a spreadsheet. And I think that's unfortunately the scenario for some companies, for a lot of this VC funding. It's just for us, 
it is a company within sports cards for Amazon. It's just another number on a sheet. So it's like, and it's the same thing with, I think I talked about this before. It's Prism, for example, is just another number on a spreadsheet for, for Panini. It's, it's, it's for us. It's, it's very important. It's the most important, one of the most important sports card products for them. It's also probably pretty important, but it's also just another number on a revenue sheet that they can either bring to investors or they can try and get more money or they can try and um, bring money back to investors or whatever. But either way, um, I'm trying to pull up the other interesting tweet that I saw. So um, sports card news, they had a tweet about some of the investors that were in the second round of funding. So other than Amazon, uh, Channing Fry, Chris Paul, DeAndre Hopkins, Chris Bryant, Kevin Love, Skyler, Skyler Diggin Smith. Um, I don't know how to pronounce that person, but CEO of Dapper Labs, Will Ahmed. Um, Nat Turner was also in there. Uh, Darren Harmon, uh, Bain Capital. Um, so in general, I think, my, I mean, my main thoughts on this, I think are just that like, it's just, unfortunately, when you get capital and when you get when you have a tech company like this uh and you get funding from investors and there are and it's not a company that's all funded by the customers that you have uh, you run into a scenario where if you're not making enough money in this scenario potentially the 13, if, or if you're using, or if you're burning too much of the cash, the 13 million that they got, Amazon is going to say, yeah, we're just not going to, we're not going to do that piece of the business anymore because like I said, it's just another number on a spreadsheet. Um, and I think, I don't know if this is what we're going to see, if we're going to see a trend of other companies that this is going to potentially happen to. I mean, I think if you look at some of the other companies, companies they you know like golden has gotten a lot of investment i think that's probably a little bit different because of the marketplace they built um i'm just trying to think of other ones that you know there's other sports card companies you've seen like i think loop has done investments but like you look at those companies specifically whatnot i guess is another example um but like you look at those companies they're probably making money um making enough money from their customers that they don't necessarily have to worry about doing more rounds of funding because like when, if you're whatnot and you're just getting started up, you know, the, the venture funding I think is important um, and getting some of the investors. So that way you can do the marketing, you can get the infrastructure available. If you have this idea, I think all that stuff is important. Uh, but then getting the customer base is also important. And, you know, maybe, you know, I, I obviously, you know, collectibles, another one rally, Raleigh rally dibs is kind of another one um, dibs in the scenario, obviously, but I think, you know, we haven't necessarily seen, I think rally they've done some, they've done some venture capital. I don't think collectible has, I think collectible is kind of an, they're in a good spot with, you know, when it comes to, and obviously I, I worked for them for a little bit. So like, I, I, I know the people working for that team. I know how hard they're working to get more customers on board. Um, but when it comes to like venture funding, like they're not necessarily doing it. And I think if, you know, companies within cards actually, and I think the other big, I think the other big name that was an, an investor was sports card investor um, in the initial $2.8 million funding round. You know, I, I don't know. Um, oh, and then Nat Turner, I guess Nat Turner was also in that initial group, but either way, I mean, you have, you had people within sports cards making investments in this company. I don't know, you know, where things turn. I mean, you can clear, like I said, you can go to their social media and you can see that they kind of have shifted all of their kind of content and the stuff that they're sharing is all web three NFT, all that kind of content. So if they're shifting that sort of business, I guess, I don't know why maybe they couldn't have figured out how to do cards with NFTs. And maybe that would have, change sort of the outcome here or maybe it wouldn't have changed anything i guess maybe you know maybe you look at it and say although although it could have had some sort of effect it really unfortunately didn't uh because you know maybe there was no way to pivot like maybe you know if you go to like OpenSea or you go to some of the 
NFT marketplaces. You can find sports card, like you can find like tops or panini, uh, like you can find tops or panini cards, but like, is there a licensing issue there? Are they going to run into something like that? I mean, I know tops had tried to do NFTs in the past and they didn't, it didn't exactly work for them. I think, unfortunately, because like they tried to, they tried to work with one company and maybe the company didn't work. So then they tried doing it with another company and that didn't exactly work. So, I mean, it'll, it'll be interesting to see sort of what fanatics tries to do if they, try and go into nfts or if they even really go for anything like this um i mean i'm gonna see like it, it pretty much covers their whole statement like i said that you don't really have to worry about funding and i know that um i think actually on twitter someone had tweeted at raleigh or rally and collectible and both companies on twitter said that the closing of the silicon valley bank was not going to affect any customer funds that were on the platform which obviously i mean that's that's great that they're coming out and saying that kind of thing because that's uh, you know with the amount of funding that's on the platform when it comes to how much money is kind of trading day to day they've got like million dollar assets on that platform so like obviously having the assurance that you don't have to like worry about like if you know i don't know if you want to um if you, if you want to be in this space, I guess you don't have to worry about like not being able to get the funds. I guess that's which, which is kind of the thing. Um, Oh, Mike's in the comments too. It'll be interesting. Let me see what he said. It'll be interesting to see if this is because fractional is a segment going down or if it's because collectible is doing better. Yeah. I mean, it could even just be, I mean, it could even just be that like we're seeing sort of a shift in how many companies are doing fractional. Like, you know, like I said, I, I, I worked for collectible. I saw, I see, I see how hard the people are working behind the scenes to, you know, bring in new assets, change sort of the way things are going and like all these kind of things. And I think that they're doing a really great job. And I, like I said, it's just going to be interesting to see, like in the past, you know, in the past we had Panini, we had tops, we had, upper deck we had leaf which we still have all these companies but it's like top slash fanatics is really kind of standing out as a top company there and i guess it's maybe not the best example but it's like um it's not a one-to-one -one example but it's like we are seeing a little bit of a consolidation of the platforms of the market of everything within our industry unfortunately because of the way things have changed over the past year or two i think the pandemic you know 2020 20 even 2021 like that's when we saw this that's when we saw a lot of this funding come in for a company like dibs um you know so in general i think these companies maybe we're just going to see a little bit of a consolidation like maybe i don't know maybe a uh, collectible or, or rally or some other company comes in or comes in to and fanatics takes over them or something like that i mean i just think um, I think another company was uh, Do Dilly was like a company that uh, was bought by Beckett, I believe. Um, Andrew, I, I talked to the you know owner and the co the founder of that, and he, he's super super nice. Um, so like he, you know that's a company that was like an uh, NFT sort of uh, AI uh, marketplace based for for you know for cards you scan them in all that kind of stuff they were bought by beckett so it's like maybe some of the big hobby companies like a psa um maybe they come in and and maybe that's maybe that's an example like maybe you know collector's universe was um is now you know partnering with gold with golden um and then like also like you know, Card Ladder is also working with PSA and Golden. So it's like these companies, maybe we're going to see more mergers of companies because there was, you know, over in 2020, 2021, we saw pretty significant growth across the industry in everything. And now that we're seeing a little bit of the growth slow down, maybe there's going to be a bit of a consolidation and maybe there's going to be, maybe there's going to be a bit of a, I don't know how to explain it. Maybe there's going to be a bit of uh combining of certain companies i think that's potentially what we could see over the next you know few years maybe it's combining maybe it's um companies being bought i don't, I don't know i mean I, I think that there are a ton of different things that could happen and just those are just my thoughts and my perspective on um 
uh, you know, unfortunately, we never, you know, in within sports cars, I don't, I don't care really what it is. Like, I never want to see things get shut down because that, you know, as much as we as collectors or we as people on social media can just go out and tweet about these types of things, there's people that were on the back end. There was people that were working on these projects that maybe they don't have a job now or, you know, I don't know, maybe they, maybe they have to change their job or they have to change something or they lost their job. Unfortunately, like, I just think that there's, there's a lot of, um, I guess you could call it turmoil. There's a lot of like disruption that happens when things shut down and there's people involved and it's just unfortunate when stuff like that happens. So like, I, I never root for any of that type of stuff. Like I know that, you know, you're probably going to find people on social media who are, you know, they're throwing a little bit of a parade. I, I don't know necessarily anybody off the top of my head, but I'm sure, you know, there's people in the there's people in cards that don't like the fractional, so they're gonna sit here and say either I told you so, or they're gonna say like, see, look at this is this is this is what I've been talking about or whatever. I, I don't know. We'll see sort of what happens in the future. <laughs>